Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be comparing the Tyro 99, the Tero Q215 and the STX225. These are all budget kits available from either Banggood or Gearbest. They all cost around about $100 or so and I have done build videos and set them up and flown all of them and one of the main questions that I keep getting is which is the best out of the lot of them and I think that's a difficult one to answer and I think it will be a different answer for every individual it really depends on what things bug you because these are not perfect kits you know they are 99 to 112 dollars in fact I think I've seen some people get these two with coupons for like 89 dollars and I would normally say that, you know, for a decent copter, you're going to be want to be spending, you know, $160 up to $200 for a decent setup. You know, so there are some compromises. So the first one that might make you decide which one to go for is actually the shop that you get them from. So these two are from Gearbest, so the Tero and the STX-225, and the Tyro 99 is from Banggood. Now, a lot of people tell me that they don't like to buy from Gearbest. Sometimes it can be a few months before the thing turns up or comes into stock, and then when it arrives, you know, the customer service isn't great. And, you know, Banggood seem to be better at that. I've had issues with Banggood as well. I tend to find that, you know, when you're buying from China, you know, don't expect it to turn up within a week or so. But, you know, Banggood are better and that is the case with their customer service as well. Which I think is a bit of a shame because, for me, the Tyro 99 is the worst out of the lot of them. Now, don't get me wrong, it's completely functional and I know a lot of people have bought one and are having fun with it. But when I compare it to these two for the money I think these two are better and I will detail why that is so let's start off first of all with the Tyro 99 so yeah $99 I guess without a coupon the cheapest of all of them my biggest issue with the Tyro 99 is the camera it's got a very narrow field of view it's a CMOS camera as I think all of these cameras are but it does make it really difficult to fly. I switched this one out to a 2.5mm lens and got it a little bit wider but yeah it was still fairly narrow so the upgrade for this one is to switch the camera out but then you are spending more money and when you do switch the camera out you get a problem if you use the same cable then you will get the on-screen display flickering and the fix for that is to connect it up to the 5 volt pad that is on the flight controller Another problem with this one is the fact that the VTX is on the outside, so there's no room for it in the inside. Alright, it's pretty well protected, but still, it would have been neater for it to be on the inside. And then lastly, we have got the noise that is over the picture. And, you know, it's not debilitating, and all of these models have got noise over the top of them. But, you know, it's just an extra thing for me because we've got a low ESR capacitor here, supposedly, but we're still getting a fair amount of noise on the pitch. And if you upgrade the camera, you're just going to see that noise a little bit better. A problem I had with the Tyro as well is how difficult the frame was to build. We've got all sorts of lengths of screws, absolutely loads of them, so you have to figure out which one goes where. And then when it's all together, you have to have your battery pressing against those screws. Neither of these come with a battery, by the way, as well. So, yeah, those are my issues with the Tyro, but, you know, it did fly. It will get you in the air, but I just think that some of the other options were better. You know, no smart audio on the VTX, which is fine. You can access the VTX on the top there, no problem. One thing I did like about this one is that you have some soft mount standoffs here so there wasn't any problems with mid your oscillations or noise or anything like that reaching through to the flight controller and in general it did fly pretty nicely. The camera also isn't protected up the front despite all of this 
aluminium up here. If you've got a micro camera though, it would be. But again, you know, I've said this all along. Anytime you start switching out components, trying to fix things, you are eating into that $100 budget and then you might as well have just, you know, picked the components yourself and spent a little bit more to get better quality. So I would leave this as it is, maybe at most put on a wide angle lens and class it as a basher quad. So the Tero Q215 has a very similar name to the Tyro, so I keep getting them mixed up. Yeah, the frame on this one was really impressive. We've got recessed screws all in here, and we have got higher KV motor, 2206. I have a question about that though, because, you know, they didn't perform like a 2206 2600 KV motor, even with different props, so I'm not sure they are telling the truth with this one. Yeah, so we had like a silicon mat here as well, which was pretty nice. This one's got an LED and buzzer board. This one also has a built-in VTX into the flight controller and it has smart audio. It does have one big downside though, and that is the fact that this screw here that goes through to the standoff also goes through the arm and because these aren't top quality motors the vibrations from these motors are reaching to the flight controller and there are no soft mounts so when I would throttle up it would judder like this the fix is easy to put some soft mounts on there but you know if we we're talking about how it flew out of the box it was just terrible so you have to do this modification here with this one we've also got a low ESR capacitor on on the battery however this one has got loads of noise it's got lines all across the screen I'm actually questioning whether you know this is actually doing anything at all and whether it just needs removing but yeah for me the noise was most annoying on this one and we've got this camera at the front here it's very dull I think it's a CMOS camera but it's wider than the Tyro so it's more usable and yeah there's some really nice touches with this we've got braiding here we've got silicon wires for the motor wire so that was a downside of the Tyro. It got these non-silicon wires here and it makes it difficult to solder up. And both of these are pretty much plug and play. So, you know, you just plug the camera straight in. And, you know, the VTX is already a part of this one and you can just plug in your receiver as well. Now, one thing I want to mention with the Tero is that the receiver slot, so it's a JST connector, is just for S-Bus. So I think if you wanted to do anything else, then you'd have to start hooking it up to UARTs and, you know, it could start to get complicated. So, you know, if you are running iBus or something like that, then the Tyro just has a jumper to solder it in and so does the STX225 as well. So I would say if you are doing iBus, then maybe this one would be a bit more tricky for you to set up. So, lastly, we have the STX-225, and this is my personal favourite out of all of them. It shouldn't be, really, but it is. The motors are a smaller stator, so a 2204 against, you know, we have got 2206, and then these ones are also a 2206, lower KV though, you can go 5S on this one as well, but I'm not sure I would say for sort of like a beginner going 5S. Yeah, I was really surprised with the performance of these motors, plenty of power, and we've got some premium props here as well with the Gemfan 5040. It's very lightweight, 277 grams, so you know, that is a plus side for me because I love lightweight copters. This one had noise over the video as well, however, I think it will be the one that is easiest to fix because we've got individual ESCs here, so you can put individual capacitors on there. It didn't come with a low ESR capacitor, but you could stick one here on the battery as well. But the main reason why this is my favorite is it flew the best. I did my setup, you know, you can go and check out the setup builds. 
and it flew really smoothly and you know even though there was a load of noise there I could sort of filter that out in my head and see how well this thing was flying you see the screws for the standoffs for the flight controller do not go through the arms so we don't get that vibration that you get with this one so I think best out of the box for me was this one the only problem I had with this one is I had to file down this camera housing it wouldn't fit in here so if you don't have a file you know you can go to a hardware store and get just a, a file so that's not a difficult one uh, downside of this one was these screws here just weren't long enough for the camera so I had to get my own screws so you know they're the same screws as a run cam so I had some spare of those but if you don't then you know that could be a real pain if you were trying to build this one up another thing I like about this one as well is because we've got the individual ESC's we have loads of room in here so if you actually wanted to upgrade it with say a run cam split then you've got the room in there to do it and if you want to upgrade the VTX that would be easy to do as well as I say loads of space I really like these little tiny antennas as well they work nicely so yeah for me this one is the best one and yeah these two I don't know you know they are flyable this one has a little bit too much noise for me and would need more work everything that I've shown of these has been how they are out of the box without changing anything this one I had to change a little bit more because you know it without these I would just say yeah you don't get this model because it doesn't fly well unless you soft mount the flight controller a little bit too much noise for me on this one so yeah that's why this one is my favorite there is just one thing as well I want to talk about regarding this hundred dollar ninety nine dollar price tag I think it is a bit of a trick you know this isn't a cheap hobby and yeah you do get a lot for your money that is true but you have to remember you are still going to need a receiver for each of them you know so if you are going fly sky or free sky you know talking maybe twelve dollars for that then you're gonna have to have a transmitter so if you go down the fly sky route, maybe get one for you know 30 quid or you know fifty dollars something like that you're gonna need FPV goggles you know which again you can pick up maybe for 60 to 80 dollars depending what you go for like the EV 800 D's or something like that and you're gonna need a battery and a charger so I think you're gonna be well over two hundred dollars to get these things flying so I just want to put that out there because there's a lot of buzz around these ninety nine dollar drones but they're not though are they then they're bare bones you know bare bone ninety nine dollar drones what they should call them and you're gonna have to spend maybe a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars to actually get them going so to me it's a bit of a trick but you know I completely understand if you need to do this sort of thing go as cheap as possible then for me it is this guy the STX 2T5 let me know in the comments which one you guys would go with and why and maybe say why I'm wrong and I will leave it there so as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers